summer months are coming I don't know how to take it A memory of a lover Picture frames and bracelets And they say Keep your head up, boy Cause May is like Miranda I could not understand her Her voice is like a riddle That leads me to the water And I drown When she kissed my lips Today I will show the fully analog process of creating picture with a 120 film on the medium format camera Hasselblad 501C. Hasselblad camera have a 6x6 frame and only 12 shots on one roll of film. And because 120 camera works with the winding from one side to another side, the film itself have a backing paper. Next step is the film development and I'm using Patterson tank. It's universal tank and I can develop or two 35mm films or one 120 film. So let's remove the core and adjust the reels to 120 film. To load the negative you need to move one side of the reel and the special balls on the sides will advance the film. Sometimes it gets sticky so I'm usually move it back and forward. And when everything is ready, I reassemble the structure, put the core, put everything back in the tank and close the lid. In this case, I will never forget anything outside the changing bag. I don't need the opener for the 35mm canister because it's already opened and it's only paper backing on the 120 film. So let's close everything up and quickly load the film on the reel and put the reel inside the drum. And when the film is loaded, let's prepare our darkroom and start developing process. For the first step, I need to heat up C41 chemistry to 38 degrees. I'm using simple IKEA bucket, warm water and Cinesteel circulator to heat up the bath to the proper temperature and hold this temperature for a long period of time. Usually I start from 39 degrees on the circulator and adjust my temperature in the bottle from there. Simplified C41 process contains only three bottles with the three different regions. So the first one is a color developer, second one is a bleach picks and the third one is stabilizer. For better color reproduction and color range, you need to be precise with the temperature. To have a precision in two digits after comma, I'm using this human body thermometer. For counting my rolls of the film and time, I'm using this multi-timer app for Android. I'm not using pre-wash, but I preheat the drum. The first step is a color developer. At the moment, I'm using really old solution, so I have a, almost one minute more of the color developer and almost 15 minutes of bleach fix. After first step of color developer, you need to immediately stop and at the same time bleach and fix your negatives. I'm not using inversion method, I'm using only this bath method with a rotation. And after bleach fix, we can wash truly our negative and in this step your negative no longer light sensitive. The last step is a stabilizer, but mostly it's a pure distilled water with a surfactant. When you open your drum, you will see the pictures on your negative. In this step you just need to carefully open up your reel, don't touch the emulsion surface, unwind the negative from the reel, and remove excess amount of water with a rubber squidgy. After negatives is dry, you can cut them in pieces and put them in the storage in these negative sleeves. I'm using paper sleeves, I don't know why, but for me they work a little bit better to prevent the static electricity and for long time storage. Only one downside, it's not really easy to see through this paper. I'm cutting negatives in the pieces of three. And on this step is the end of our development. So the next step is the printing with the array 4 process on the color paper. 
I have a 6x6 enlarger, it means the maximum size what I can print is 6x6 negative. After cleaning up the glass plates, on the top plate I'm applying dry shampoo to remove the Newton ring effect if it can occur. So the next step, I put the negative with the emulsion down so the shiny side goes up. If you can read the codec letters with the proper orientation, it means your emulsion side on opposite side. To print medium format 120 film, I need to exchange lenses. At the moment, I have 50mm lens and it's not enough of coverage for this type of negative. Usually enlargers have a different board with a lens mounting. So I'm shifting from the 50mm lens to 80mm lens. And now I have a full coverage of the negative and I can change magnification of my enlarger and get the picture in focus on my easel. When I zoom in, you can clearly see the different coverage of the light. So I have a two modes on my enlarger and you can switch from 35 to 120. And now I can adjust magnification more and start focusing procedure. Because color negative don't really have any type of grain, but you can see color clouds or color clusters on the negative. You also can use this focus finder and I'm using focus finder from Patterson. It's a simple device with a lens and a mirror. And if you take a look in the viewfinder, you can clearly see high magnification on your picture. When I'm ready with the focusing, I'm close down the filters and adjust the masking on my glass negative carrier. I need to remove all the transparency from my picture to make a proper measurement of the color balance. When I calibrate, I will adjust it again because I really like the framing on the 120 film and the Hasselblad backs. And with the old Philips color analyzer, I'm searching for the neutral gray point with adjusting three channels separately. And when it's done, I have a settings for my aperture and the filtration settings with the yellow and magenta on my enlarger. So let's transfer time from calibrator to my timer and proceed with the first test print. So when I have a piece of paper loaded in a Yobo drum, I can proceed with the color development of my paper. Here I will use more advanced process, so I'm using color developer for the first step. And with the temperature of 35 degrees, I need to rotate for 45 seconds for color developer and proceed with the stopping bath for at least 15 seconds. And because this drum have a special cup, development starts only when you flip horizontally. So it means it's more precise with the time and you can be more consistent with the development procedure and development times. Next step is a bleach fix and it's more or less the same process as you have with a color negative film. After bleach fix, I'm using water bath to wash out all the chemicals from the surface of my paper. And the last step, I'm using color stabilizer for final wash. For paper, it's a little bit more steps, but the process is much faster, especially if you have a fresh chemistry and paper development less critical with the time and temperature in comparison to film. So it's much better to be more precise with the film development because it will save you a lot of time with the corrections in the dark room later. All C41 and RA4 chemistry is reusable, so we can put it back in the bottles. So here I have my first test print and I can quickly dry it on a wall, applying the squeegee and we can inspect if I need to make any corrections with the color. So I'm using Fuji crystal paper, so it's RC paper and it's drying really fast. I'm not really happy with the color rendition on this film and probably it's just because I have old chemistry for C41 process. But anyway, I have a really decent shot, so let's proceed with the small corrections. I'm using lab journal to put all my settings for initial print and all of my adjustments to have a logic behind all of my processes. I start with the middle position, what I have from calibrator, so it's 60, 60, 0. And to make a small series of print, I'm using this small test printer. So you open it up, small door and make exposure and move the next door on the same position. So you're basically testing the same spot on your negative. So after repeating this development procedure, you can inspect the array of your prints from the same spot. And because I change only 
cyan channel so i basically move the yellow and magenta channel down you can clearly see the change and gradation of color on this wet print so let's quickly dry it and inspect what is the best position for my adjustments because i have a gradation you can clearly see transition from the cyanish color to a little bit of reddish color and your idea behind it you need to find the sweet spot when the colors looks right for you it's much better to make a two test prints, one with a yellow channel and one with a magenta channel. So you can select optimal settings for each channel separately. So it means if you have any type of disbalance, you can easily find the sweet spot for the whole picture. After adjustment, let's make a bigger print and test if our settings looks correct. Because it's fully wet process, as you can understand, you will make a lot of developments and be prepared and be ready to repeat it multiple times. And probably in future, I will invest in the Yobo system for development of my film and development of my paper. But for now, let's open up the drum and check the print what I have and if I have any type of technical errors. So the print looks good, so let's quickly dry it on the wall and inspect the dry print for the color change, sharpness and alignment on the paper. Colors on the print not really vibrant, but I really like the composition and the depth of focus here in the picture. Only one technical problem, I have a small crop on the right side and not even masking of my negative. So let's put the final settings in my lab book and proceed with the final print. I'm also not using pre-weighting of my print because it's a little bit decreasing time of development and your first seconds of development became not so aggressive so you will remove a little bit of saturation and color rendition from your prints. So keep it in mind, your drum should be completely dry before you load your paper. So let's quickly dry my final print and see if I need any adjustment of my print, color balance or position on the paper. As always, all of my prints you can find on my web shop. So this one looks really good for me. I really like the composition and the framing. So for now it goes on my website in my personal collection. But for today I have additional print. So the next print we will proceed with exactly the same procedure. So let's quickly reload the negative from first one to the second one. Remove all of the dust. Proceed with the focus checking and with the calibration on this negative. For this glass carrier, you can actually lift it up and advance the film, but I don't really like this method because it can create the scratches and you basically advancing the dust inside your negative carrier. And the same procedure as for previous negative, you cropping the picture, removing the borders from the negative, calibrate with the color for neutral point, make a first test print, and after first test print, you make a development, and with the first development, you check if you need to make any adjustments on the color and the color balance. For the test prints, I'm using this old batch of paper with the color leaks on the left upper side, it's really good practice to print a little bit bigger than you can judge like first picture and make small adjustments with the test printer. I really like the sharpness and the color balance on the BMW building there. What I don't like about the colors, it's not really vibrant colors of the flowers and it's a bit muddy color of the black. But as I said before, it's probably my color negative development procedure with the C41 chemistry not really fresh. Because I'm mostly developing or pushing the film, as you can understand, you have no more than 10 developments of the film. And if you push it to 15 or 16 or something like this, you can create more problems with your later prints or scans. But I anyway really like this composition on this print, what I make with my Hasselblad. And it's something about the square composition and the square pictures. On this picture I really like the sharpness and as always micro contours of the size lens. I don't really understand how it works, but for me I cannot imagine the picture in square, but when I take the framing instrument like Hasselblad, you can easily find the proper composition in the window of the viewfinder. 
If you want to support this channel, all the donations always welcome. Thank you for watching, thank you for support, and see you in the next videos.